Hey, this is Tracy Lewis from Stuff and Things. It is that time again. It's paper pumpkin time. It actually was delivered while we were playing disc golf, so we hopped on down to the in-laws and grabbed it. And now I'm headed home, so stay tuned for more paper pumpkin fun. All right, I am home. I haven't seen anything to do with this paper pumpkin, except I did on the 24th see which colors were included in the kit. They were they are the new in colors for 2020. And I made a sample card to send out to a friend of mine and I this month's paper pumpkin is going to have this color, the green and the yellow. So Let's see what we've got here. Stampin' Spot is Misty Moonlight. Oh, which is a fourth color. So Misty Moonlight is the blue. That is one of the four in colors. The stamp set has big, bold letters. Hey, you're amazing. Oh, happy day, and I see some rainbows, pluses, I don't know what that would be called, and an asterisk. All right. So for next month, it's going to be a box of sunshine, and I know that is a kit that includes enough materials for making eight cards, and then is also designed for you to take this box cover the paper pumpkin with a label and actually make the box into a box of sunshine to give to someone who needs it and you fill it with fun sunny items. And it is the kit that Sarah put together. And I get some more fun tissue for any gift giving I need. I save all of this. Mostly it's in the aqua color that's in the typical kit. And let's see here. I want to get these color names for you because I have not memorized them. I just received my order the other day and there's so much new stuff it's hard to remember what it is all called all right we have the pink and white bankers twine double-sided dots and dimensionals oh those are fun um epoxy asterisks This light pink is not one of the end colors. The green is, the blue is, and the pink. And I see some smaller sized cards and some A2 sized cards with oh, a variety of inside colors going all the way down, which is great for alternative making. Ooh, I love the the labels are stitched clouds in three sizes, so I imagine they're, they're just layers. They might not actually be for labels. And then a nice large label. More fun layers. Very vivid colors. Love the bright colors. And it looks like there are four sheets of the bright colored die cuts. Light lavender, smaller card bases, some rainbowy bright colored 
A2 size bases, vellum, wow, lots of goodies in here for making alternatives. And then uh, I like that this green with the pluses has a solid back so I can cut it in two and get two cards, card fronts out of it. And then these vellum pieces are just cut rectangles. And these are fishtail banners. All right, so I'm going to go away now and start contemplating what kind of fun alternatives to make. I did receive the cardstock and the pattern DSP in the new in colors, and I'm glad that it came before Paper Pumpkin came, so I'll be able to incorporate these for sure, these colors, with some added material. No inks though, just the cardstock and the pattern DSP. I'll be back soon. All right, so normally I pop in as I progress through the creation of things and pulling up pieces. And this time I just got so focused, I ended up not doing that. So I'm going to actually in, in one sitting here, go through everything. I do have three different sets of cards to show you, starting with the beginning stamper cards and then moving on up to some more elaborate ones. The last two are pretty far from the kit itself. It's a special request from my husband that I was experimenting with, and I'll share with you guys what I ended up doing per his request. I even have somewhere around here in my pile here. Um, he actually diagrammed for me what he had in mind and what he would like to see. And so I created two of them for him and they're a little bit on the rough side. Okay. So parts and pieces that I added, I did get my new order a couple of days, the pre-order a couple of days before this kit came. This kit includes four of the new in colors plus purple posy. So I knew that and because I had looked it up on the 24th when they revealed them. So that's all I knew. And the products that I pulled to use, I think I used most of them. I have pulled this two-tone Misty Moonlight and Whisper White with Silver Baker's Twine to go with I, you know, on some of the cards I used the pink. This is what came with it. I pulled out some glimmer paper, silver and the, I think this is called Sparkle, and it is a retiring product, so I wanted to use it, and I used it on a few cards. Two new embossing folders. I have, I can't show the catalog yet, but I do have the physical catalog in my hands now, so I can look up names of things. The Tasteful Textile I used, I used Subtle, which is from the last catalog, and the Old World Paper 3D. On one of them I actually inked up with Misty Moonlight on the top, and I'll show you what that looks like. In fact, it needs to be cleaned. I hope I won't forget, or I will regret it. Then I did get the solid cardstock, as well in the in colors, as well as the pattern DSP and these are the ones that I used two of them I still haven't committed when I show you the designs which uh, backgrounds are going to go on which one I will commit to that after I show you everything I have put together colors I did want to talk about the colors in this kit the only color that isn't used is the cinnamon cider is not part of this kit. It is one of the five in colors. They do have Misty Moonlight, that's the ink, Bumblebee, Just Jade, and a lot of Magenta Madness, which is great because it makes the whole thing very bright and cheerful. So I, in, for the project for my husband, the two cards I worked on, I used the well-written well framelits dies. I did pull out this stamp set, which is Lovely You. It actually comes with a punch 
and I did one project with the punch and one of these sentiments and then I also used the sentiment without the punch on another of the cards. So this is my husband's diagram that he wanted to see me uh, make the sentiments as elaborate as the rest of the cards that I make. So he envisioned a 3D popped up somehow with the letters dropped out. And this was his diagram, so I'll show you what I ended up doing. I don't know if I quite achieved what he had in mind because the, the dies that I have don't necessarily uh, work the way he, you know, the letters aren't individuals. And then I wanted to show you, I know that I do crafting. I don't know if I've mentioned we travel full time in our RV and our hobbies that we do together. We have two of them. We play disc golf. Now we're up to twice a day now that the days are longer and the weather is nicer where we're at. We play twice a day. So that's 24 holes of golf. It's very good exercise. Love it. And then I've started a new hobby that I don't have a lot of time to spend on, but I do want to talk about it and show you what I just completed because it's really important, I think, to stress to people who are learning something new or stretching themselves when you're doing crafting. And so I spent, I think I have about seven hours into this drawing. It, is, it was a tutorial and the person is a young lady from somewhere in Europe, like Netherlands, I think. And she's very good. And this was one of her free downloads. And her name is Amy Howard. And she has a very nice way of helping you through when you pick apart doing a realistic drawing with colored pencils, how you choose your colors, and then how you do a drawing like this in small segments, really paying attention to your reference photo. And her biggest thing that hit me is halfway through this, I was ready to throw it away and start over. I actually, this is the back of my cardstock. The front is smooth. The back has these little tiny ridges. But one of my items that I had purchased, which was graphite copy paper, and I used a ball tool. In fact, I used the one that is part of the um, scoring. It's a score tool, I guess, in, in our world. But they call it a, a ball tool in the colored pencil world. So I did my graphite uh, line drawing. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. That's what it looked like. And it just... And I tried erasing it. It wouldn't erase. So I ruined the front of my beautiful... Um, colored pencil cardstock, which isn't a Stampin' Up! cardstock. I had to buy a special art paper. So this was my second attempt. There's even a couple of places I tried really hard to not get the graphite um, to go through. And as I said, I was trying really hard, and at halfway through, I was ready to give up. So when you're working on your crafting projects, don't give up on them. Look at them as... Um, working on them to the finish because you're learning as you go and you will probably find that you can cover up mistakes quite nicely with your embellishments. You can trim things down, um, readjust based on what you did, even if it's a little bit off the mark. So that's my takeaway from this very long drawing that I finished. It was like, it's my break away from my hobby of crafting, which is kind of funny. And then the last item I used was this little flower punch, which is new in the catalog. Okay, so let's start with, sorry for rambling on about the drawing, but I really think it's important for people to not get frustrated. Like, I was really frustrated. And I just kept going, and it ended up fine in the end. So now I have some really cute examples of a basic some basic beginner stamper cards. This happens to be the other half of the green and the pattern. So the back of this, and then this green, I accidentally flubbed it and got some of the misty moonlight on it. And I thought, what the heck, 
I will go ahead and use the back and um, see if I can make something nice with just ink. And then this is an ink that both of these could be trimmed down and then I made. Now this is um, a good one to show you the differences in the colors. This is Whisper White. It's very creamy um, and warm whereas the cardstock in the kits always come as a much cooler color. Even the the grid paper is matches better with the cardstock from the kit. And I did one that I wasn't happy with. This one I still think you could trim it down and mat it and and make it a real fun um, card with some work. Uh, the hay I used, it had a little flaw so I covered up the flaws with my um, gel pen. Now the gel pens on water-based, this is a, a dye-based so it's based by water and when you get it wet some of the color leaks through so it, I would love it to be crisp and white but it's not. So then I went and I sponged with the Misty Moonlight and I thought that you could easily turn this into a card and you could trim this down and have a um, Misty Moonlight border. So I really like this and I, the artwork is really crisp. I'm very pleased. I just used the closest approximate colors. So my colors to approximate the, let's see, get the name right, Magenta Madness was Melon Mambo. And then I pulled out between the, the honeybee, bumblebee, bumblebee, I pulled out these three to try to approximate. And I think that this one was Mango Melody that I used. I pulled for the green, which is not on this card, but it's over here. I pulled Call Me Clover, which is a retiring in color, to be the closest to just jade ink because the inks weren't ready for pre-order or I would have had them. So that's the beginner cards. I think my favorite is probably the You're Amazing. And the Oh Happy Day here is very cute. Trimmed down, matted with some of these embellishments just a couple of them would be just a perfect card so i will probably dress those up for the final showcase that i've been doing at the end each month and i think that works really well i think somebody even asked for it on youtube for just the pictures so that they would have a record of them and now these are the more um, casual to avid stamper. They're probably more casual than anything. Uh, this one is, is not put together yet. This is what I plan on doing with it. It uses that punch. Um, the purple posy small card trimmed down. I trimmed the lines in ha a little bit bigger than half. I put the some of the bling on. I was trying to bright even further brighten up the cards and get some bling on them. The second one, is really too, oh, I have lost a part of this one. I don't know where it disappeared to, so I'll have to find it. So that'll be a surprise. And what it will look like, this is the Old World Paper treatment. And then this goes on here with wherever, because I did this hours ago. I've been working diligently in this last chunk of time on my husband's special request. So I will have to dig up what goes on top here. I have this pieced together and it will go likely on the green. What I might do is pick a, a different color. This might be show you what the misty moonlight background could look like. Something like that. And this is already trimmed down so it needs to go on a base and it'll have a 1 8 all the way around showing. And then 
this one is so cute. This is like a, a 60s card, very bright colors. It reminds me of the Partridge family bus. And this is where I used the, the blue twine to kind of bring in more of the misty moonlight from Oh Happy Day. So those are that chunk of four. I'll keep this aside. And then I will show you my attempt at meeting my husband's requirements of some sort of a 3D effect with the die cutting. And because of the way die cuts work, I ended up with two projects for his request. And this one I took apart because I used the Misty Moonlight. I really like these clouds a lot. There's three different sizes in this kit. And I just think that it makes a nice, either a background effect. Oops, I was going to do this one horizontal because I am so stuck on verticals all the time. So something like that. This is the insides of the Miss You. And I haven't decided if, since this one's all straight, I have not decided if I want to go jaunty angles like that. I probably will, just to keep it different. And then, in the case of all of these, I will probably add some stars as the embellishments. Twine on these two somewhere. And then I'm going to call this kit done. So the next you will see, unless something comes up that I want to share, I will be putting these together, photographing them, and getting them in the showcase at the end. So how many did I do? I think I did like four casual, four basic or beginner stamper, and then these two special ones per my husband's request. I really like this kit. I love the bright colors, and I, I do wish that the inks had been available to purchase. They even have a flyer emphasizing celebrating in colors, and then uh, use the Paper Pumpkin Kit May 2020, a kit in color with other products like ink, paper, and coloring tools from the new 2020 to 2022 color lineup. So the in colors, the inks would have been great to really take this kit as far as it could go. But I think that picking the colors that I chose, I even have Purple Posy, which you cannot buy now, but I did get the reinker. So I, I have, and I haven't used it. So I might still, outside of this video, do some some more with the Purple Posy just because it's here and I've got it and uh, it'll be fun to play with it. So I hope that you um, liked this. Now the last video I had the camera way too far away so I'm hoping that when I review this I kept the camera down it's actually at my eye level so I hope that this video is way easier to see and sadly I didn't have like a coloring project so that you could watch me work. It was just mostly basic assembly, cutting, sponging, um, but all very fun things. And I love that every kit is different. And thanks for watching.